Greetings from Amer Astronomy Center and Jordan Planetarium at the University of Maine. My name is Sean Lotch, I'm the Planetarium Director, and I look forward to sharing some of the beauty and wonder of our universe with you. This is our virtual sky tour and astronomy update for July 31st. You will notice that we don't have a date range, and that's because we're going to be changing some formats going forward, uh, given some exciting announcements I'll have later on, so do stay tuned for some of those coming up. We will be doing these a little bit less often, uh, but we do have some other things that will be taking its place. So again, I'll explain as we get farther in. Well, let's go ahead and get started. The big news this week, of course, was Perseverance is on its way to Mars. This mission, also known as the Mars 2020 rover, uh, launched on July 30th, or yesterday, at 7.50 in the morning on its first attempt, of course, to head to the planet Mars. And it was really great that the first window of opportunity we had, we were able to launch this mission and head to the red planet. This spacecraft is going to land in February of 2021. So about seven months from now, and it has a whole variety of advanced instruments on it for taking new images of the planet. It also has a microphone to listen to the surface of the Mars for the first time, and also a small uh, helicopter called Ingenuity, which is going to be doing the first powered flights on another world. So a very important mission to give us a lot more information about Mars. This is actually going to drill for soil samples and cache them on the surface of Mars so that later they can be sent back here to planet Earth. So it's sort of the beginnings of a sample return mission for the future. Uh, again, so soil samples from Mars to help us see and learn about the surface of Mars in new ways. In fact, this mission in particular is looking for signs of either past or present microbiological life on the surface of the red planet. Well, moving forward, we do need to say bye-bye to Comet Neowise. This comet has been spectacular in our skies the last several weeks. It was at its best on the 23rd of this month, but now it is rapidly fading. In fact, you will need binoculars or a telescope to see it because it is not visible to the unaided eye any longer. It is quite diffuse, and with the moon in our night sky as well, it's going to make it more challenging. So again, you will need binoculars or a telescope to see it. But if you are able to get out there, do take a look. It is still in the area of the Big Dipper. It's sort of heading towards this bright star Arcturus after arcing to Arcturus using the handle of the Dipper. So again, if you drop down below, but again, you will need binoculars or a telescope to find this comet. It was really spectacular, the best we've had since Hale-Bopp uh, back in 90, 1997, and we, we're not sure when we'll have another bright comet, so I hope you did have a chance to see it, or at least see some of the spectacular images that people have been sharing online for the last several weeks. Well, continuing on, I do want to mention the Universe Explorers of Maine. We've been doing a few star parties, and going forward, we will have a regular star party on Friday night, starting next week, August 7th, every Friday night at 8.30 p.m. We'll be conducting an online star party with our club. And you do need to be a member of SLU so that you can view it, because we're actually showing you images through the telescope. You can collect those images as well. And so I hope that you'll sign up for our club and join us with it. We're going to be doing this into the fall of the year as well, as we will not be able to reopen the Clark uh, Observatory for public viewing, given some of the concerns around eyepieces and uh, people using eyepieces at the telescope. But again, this is a great way we can share live views of the sky with you, and we'll always do a guided sky tour as well. So I hope you'll join us for our next upcoming star party, again, on August 7th at 8.30 p.m. Well, lastly, uh, there's a couple other things that we want to talk about. There's a special live event that we're going to be doing on Friday, August 21st at 7 p.m. Advanced registration is required, and you can do so just by emailing planetarium at main.edu with your name and email address, and we'll sign you up for this event. It's an event called The Secrets of the Universe. We're going to be joined by a special presenter from UC Davis who is looking at the Large Hadron Collider and new discoveries in our universe. He'll be sharing clips of this upcoming incredible sort of giant screen experience and also discussing them with us. So I hope you can join us for this very special event. Again, advanced registration will be required because we'll be sending out a Zoom link to folks who are interested in participating in this live event. Again, so email me at planetarium at main.edu if you'd like to sign up for this.
Well, lastly, our biggest news is we're going to be reopening in September. Finally, we've been all waiting for this. The planetarium is going to reopen on September 4th, a Friday night at 7 o'clock for our regular public programs. And we'll have more announcements about this coming up on our Facebook page and website. But this is kind of our first announcement that we're going to be reopening again on Friday, September 4th for regular public programs. We'll only be able to have 11 people in the planetarium for our shows and ticketing will all have to be done in advance so we'll have some new procedures but again watch our Facebook page and website and our newsletter which will be going out here in the next day or so for more information. All right with that we're going to go ahead and transition to Stellarium for our live tour of the nighttime sky. We are starting our tour here in Stellarium uh, this evening, looking at the direction of west, just with that final bye-bye to Comet Neowise, if you will. So you'll notice Comet Neowise is listed there in our sky, as is the star Arcturus. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit there, so that you can get a bit of the Big Dipper in. And here, again, we can use that Big Dipper to help us find, uh, again, Arcturus. So right over here, we have the Big Dipper. Here are the seven stars that form uh, the dipper itself, the bowl and the handle, and then stars out in front of it that mark up the rest of Ursa Major, the Great Bear. And we're looking at the sky here about 9.30 in the evening, so once it's just got completely dark. Well, you can use the arc to find Arcturus. And again, Comet Neowise tonight, sort of in this area, you sort of make a almost like a triangle between the last star of the, the handle of the Big Dipper, Arcturus, and Neowise and you will need binoculars or a telescope to see this because again it has faded quite a bit but do try and check it out one last time if you have a chance over the next couple nights before it really fades away from view. Well we did look at that Big Dipper so I am going to go ahead and mark that constellation here in the night sky. There is Ursa Major the Great Bear there in the nighttime sky and if we rotate a bit around to the north a bit here. We can of course use that handle of the Big Dipper to do the arc to Arcturus, but we can also use the other portion of the Dipper and we can use the first two stars in the Dipper itself. Uh, again, these stars, Dube and Merrick, to point to Polaris, the North Star, number 43 of the 50 brightest in the night sky, but important to us because it helps mark our direction north and it is it's at the end of the handle of the little dipper right there which is a bit fainter and can be a bit more challenging to spot in the nighttime sky well if we mark that little dipper there here again we have the big dipper and little dipper or ursa major and ursa minor the great bear and little bear respectively both which are said to have very long tails sort of stretched out tails if you will in your nighttime sky well we're going to go ahead now and rotate our sky around and from the north we're actually going to head all the way back towards the south and southwestern area of our sky because tonight again as soon as it gets dark we have a bunch of things to see in this area of the sky right now so as you'll notice uh, we have Antares and Scorpius the Scorpion which are sort of dominating directly south uh, as soon as it gets dark. So Scorpius, known as the Scorpion, the reddish star Antares, marks its heart. Up through here is its head, and its tail comes all the way down here to its stinger, uh, marked by the star Shaula. And if we mark one of those stars in the Scorpion, here we can draw it in as a stick figure, also known as Kamakau Nuyo Maui or Maui's fish hook. It's been seen as a variety of different things. People have seen it as a scorpion, a fish hook, and even a palm tree. So lots of different things you might imagine with that group of stars. I will mention though that there are actually some stars that used to be a part of this constellation that are out in front of it that have sort of some spectacular names. So let's go ahead and look at those as well. If we bring our pointer back into view here, uh, there are some stars out in front. This square of stars uh, is known as Libra the Scales. And this star here is Zuganel Ganubi, and this one here is Zubanesh Shamali. They mean the northern and southern claw of the scorpion itself. So a long time ago, Libra the Scales was actually part of Scorpius the Scorpion. Constellations have changed a little bit over time, but that is Libra the Scales and those two fun star names there 
in that constellation as well. If we were to draw them in here, you see the scorpion and the scales there uh, again. But some fun names, Zuganel Ganubi, Zubanesh Shamali. And the first planetarium director I worked for in high school many, many years ago uh, taught me those star names uh, and their importance and meaning in astronomy as well. Well, we are looking at our night sky here, and once you find, uh, of course, the scorpion, you'll have no trouble. Right next to it, you're going to notice the moon in our evening sky. And the moon is what we would call a little bit of a waxing gibbous phase right now. We're going to have full moon on Monday evening, uh, the 3rd of August. So we're almost there. It's throwing a lot of moonlight, which means it's going to be hard to see the Milky Way. In fact, the moon right now, right about almost in the center of where the Milky Way would be in our sky. So it's going to be very challenging to see the Milky Way, at least for the next few nights. Into next week, it will become easier as the moon moves off and, of course, starts to, after full moon, starts to fade away a bit and rise later and later. Well, next to the moon in our evening sky, of course, we have two bright planets, Jupiter and Saturn, which have really been a fixture here over the summer months. Uh, and last uh, time we talked, they had reached opposition, meaning that they were visible from sunset all the way to sunrise. They're going to be visible as soon as it gets dark and hard to miss with binoculars. Do check out the moons that Galileo saw around the planet Jupiter. Well, from where the moon is, we also have this group of stars that we would call Sagittarius the Archer. And this is sort of the base of the Archer, its spout, its lid, and its handle. I say the base of it because it, to me, looks much more like a teapot shape. In fact, some people even call it Sagittarius the teapot there in the nighttime sky. And if we draw it in there, you'll see that teapot shape. And right off the spout of the teapot is roughly where the center of the Milky Way galaxy would be. So again, you see the moon right in that area, making it a little bit more challenging to see. Well, let's take down those constellations for now. And let's sort of head down and zoom out a little bit. And we'll come up high overhead. We do have that summer triangle, which you'll notice is higher overhead at this time. We're moving into summer. Summer officially started on the 21st of June, the summer solstice. And if you were to sort of head straight above that area of the sky of the moon, you would find Vega, Deneb, and Altair, those three stars that mark up the summer triangle. Each star is its own constellation, Vega the brightest and Lyra the harp which is a parallelogram of stars with a small triangle attached to it. It's supposed to be a handheld harp. Deneb marks the tail of Cygnus the swan, whose body, neck, and head comes down here. One wing of the swan extends on this side, the other wing over here. It's also been called the Northern Cross. And Altair, part of a diamond-shaped group of stars known as Aquila the Eagle. Well, those constellations, they're in the nighttime sky. Uh, Aquila the Eagle... Again, Ira the Harp and Cygnus the Swan are known as the Summer Triangle altogether. And if we draw them in here, are their fanciful figures uh, with lots of imagination there in the nighttime sky. Well, I'm going to take down those constellations. And we're facing again towards the south and southwest here a bit. Let's zoom out just a little bit here. Let's go ahead and turn just a little bit over towards the east. We'll get the east just barely there in our view. And I'm going to move time forward a bit here. Um, I do want to speed up time a little bit and go through the evening. And we're going to stop around the time that Mars rises. So this is around 1130 at night or so. And Mars has now risen up over in our eastern sky. Mars coming up a little bit later. Good news is as we move into August, it's going to be rising earlier and earlier. Uh, but the planet Mars, of course, is the planet that we've just launched that launched that Perseverance spacecraft to, which will be arriving there in February of 2021. Definitely also worth a look in your evening sky. And if you happen to have stayed up late enough to see Mars, if we track along the horizon here, over to the east, by that time, by 11 o'clock, you're going to notice there are some other things that are coming up in the east and northeastern sky. And in fact, if we bring our pointer back into view over here, uh, Mars is in the east. Over here, you're going to notice a group of stars that is called Perseus. And Perseus is supposed to be a hero. To me, he looks a lot like a Christmas tree, I have to say. Here's sort of the trunk of the tree and some branches coming off in either way. That's the way I sort of view him. But again, Perseus is supposed to be a hero. And one of the reasons I wanted to bring up Perseus here in our sky 
is because there is a very important meteor shower that's going to be coming up in August. Normally peaks around the 11th or 12th and is called the Perseid meteor shower. This is leftovers from a comet called Temple Tunnel and we can get up to 50 or 60 meteors per hour. Uh, now the moon were around that time is going to be about third quarter so there will be some moonlight in the evening sky. However, this is the best annual meteor shower of the year. The best time really to look around two or three in the morning so best to be up really early if you want to see those Perseid meteor shower but that is coming up a little bit later this month. Well Perseus is there and, and the meteors will appear to emanate from that area of the sky and right above it in our nighttime sky we also have this group of stars here a W or an M shape depending on where you're from. Now I grew up in Wisconsin so I sort of see it as a W shape if you're here from Maine you probably see it as an M and to some extent it depends on the time of year. Right now it really does look a bit more in my mind uh, like a W shape there in the nighttime sky versus an M but towards the the late fall and winter season it'll sort of be tipped over and then we'll see it more like an M. Uh, the constellation uh, that we're talking about is Cassiopeia the Queen of course and she sits on her throne but she's circumpolar so she's going to go around our northern sky and we're actually going to be able to see here year round just like we do with both the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper or Ursa Major and Ursa Minor if you want those formal names once again. Well there again if we rotate around here you can see those that Big Dipper Big Dipper and Little Dipper coming into view and again you can see how Cassiopeia would be one of those circumpolar stars which uh, again will appear to always go around the North Star there and be visible throughout our entire year. Well, this has been a brief tour of our night sky as you would see it here uh, for the early part of August coming up and the last night of July here tonight, July 31st. I hope you enjoyed our tour and again, do catch our online astronomy uh sky watching star parties through SLU and the Universe Explorers of Maine coming up as well. Have a wonderful week. Keep looking up and we look forward to seeing you back here at the Planetarium in September for in-person public shows once again. Have a wonderful day.